Welcome back to English 4.0, the radio show. Let's go. Advanced. Welcome, advanced students. Welcome to class 12. And here we are. Yeah, class 12, moving right along now. Um, I hope I hope you're appreciating the shows and the material. And remember, if you have any questions, feel free to send them to our team of tutors that you can reach through www.baugenengles.com, logging into your account. Make sure you take advantage of everything. The radio, the TV, the website, the mobile phone content. It's all here to help you, and we are here to help you and support you as well. So send us your questions. Send us your comments. That's what we're here for. All right, let's take a look back at what we saw yesterday in class 11. We were, we were talking about the accusative yesterday, the accusative structure, and I said, I want you to study hard. Yeah, yesterday, I wanted you to study hard, and I still want you to study hard. Remember, I want you to infinitive. My mother wants me to call her. My boss wants me to work hard. I want my family to be happy. The government wants me to pay taxes. I want my brother to be happy with his work. My brother wants me to call him more often. Okay? You remember this structure? Okay. So, ask me. Ask me if I want them to fix it. Do you want them to fix it? Yes, I do. Yes, I want them to fix it. Ask me if she wants me to go there. Does she want you to go there? Yes, she wants me to go there. Does Hillary Clinton... Actually, ask me. Ask me if Hillary Clinton wants Bill to behave himself. To behave... To behave well, we say to behave yourself, to behave one's self, which means like, comportarse bien. Ask me if Hillary wants Bill to behave himself. Does Hillary want Bill to behave himself? Yes, she does. She wants Bill to behave himself. Ask me if, ask me if my mother wants me to call her more often. Does your mother want you to call her more often? Yes. Yes, she does. My mother wants me to call her more often. Ask me if I want you to listen carefully in class. Kyle, do you want me to listen carefully in class? Yes, I want you to listen carefully in class. Ask me if Zapatero wants Rajoy to retire. Jubilarse, to retire. Ask me if Zapatero wants Rajoy to retire. Does Zapatero want Rajoy to retire? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. But let's say yes. 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 Zapatero wants, third person singular, he wants, Zapatero wants Rajoy to retire. Grammatically speaking. The reality, I don't know. Um, ask me if Telefonica wants me to subscribe to their internet service. Does Telefonica want you to subscribe to their internet service? Yes. Yes. Yes, Tele Telefonica wants me to subscribe to their internet service. Ask me if the locals, the people around here, the people in Madrid, I'm, I'm, I'm in Madrid at the moment, ask me if the locals want Madrid to host the Olympics. Unfortunately, we didn't get the Olympics in 2012. We didn't get the Olympics in 2016, but maybe next time. Ask me if the locals want Madrid to host. It means to, to hold the event in this location, to host the Olympics. Do the locals want Madrid to host the Olympics? Yes. Yes, they do. The vast majority of, of uh, Madrileños wanted Madrid to host the Olympics for, for 2016. And I know 2016 is in the future, but they wanted it when it was possible. And Rio, of course, Rio de Janeiro has won the bid. But um, the locals want Real Madrid to host the Olympics. I think it would be nice. So to host, to hold the event. You can host a party in your house, for example. Do you want Madrid to host the Olympics? Do you? 
Do you want Madrid to host the Olympics? I, I want Madrid to host the Olympics. I think it would be nice to live in a city where the Olympics are, are being held, and uh, I think it would be very exciting. Ask me if Alonso wanted Schumacher to retire. Ask me. Kyle, did Alonso want Schumacher to retire? Yes, I think so. I think Alonso wanted Schumacher to retire. I think so. Yes. Okay, so remember, I want you to practice this. I want you to study. I want you to master this structure. All right, let's move on. Okay, yesterday we were talking about fractions and percentages, but even more importantly, we're practicing grammatically the structure is the same as. One half is the same as 50%. One quarter is the same as 25%. So I'm going to go down the list, and I'm going to read the 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 percent. Oh, sorry, the fractions. I will read the fractions, and I would like you to say is the same as, and see if you can come up with the correct percentage. Okay, three quarters is the same as seventy five percent. That's right. Two thirds is the same as sixty six point seven percent. Okay, one-eighth, a little more difficult, one-eighth, careful with the pronunciation, one-eighth is the same as 12.5 percent, percent, no, it's percent, but percent, it sounds like an S, percent, like yesterday I sent a letter, percent, percent, and seven-eighths, is the same as 87.5%. Still is the same. I know, seven-eighths. But we say, is the same as 87.5%. Four-fifths. Four-fifths is the same as... That's right, 80%. Okay, two-ninths. Two-ninths is the same as 22.2%. 22.22222. We can say 22.2 repeating. In mathematics, we would put the little bar over the two and we would say repeating. 22.2 repeating. 22.2%. Five eighths is the same as 62.5%. Now, one tenth of a kilometer is the same as how many meters? Is the same as. 100 meters. Meters. That's right. Three-tenths. Three-tenths of a kilometer is the same as 300 meters. That's right. Now, 1.6 kilometers in miles, if you're American and you think in miles, 1.6 kilometers is the same as one mile. One kilometer is the same as 0.63 miles. Now, notice how I say 0.63. Normally, we would say, in this case, 0, and we would say 0.63. We Native English speakers don't normally say 63, 0.63, for example, or 24 or 87, with numbers after the decimal point. Normally, we pronounce numbers after the decimal point according to the individual digit. So I will say 0.63 miles. This is not a rule. This is not a textbook rule, but this is the way most native speakers say it. So I think it's good for you to learn it. One kilometer is the same as 0.63 miles. Now, we we also do this with telephone numbers. In English, we typically pronounce the phone numbers according to individual digits. 902-420-3517. For example, we don't we don't normally say 35 24 81 like you do in Spanish. In Spanish you usually group the numbers into twos like that, but in English we usually pronounce them according to the individual digit. And we do the same here after the decimal point, we usually group the numbers or sorry, we usually pronounce the numbers according to the individual digit. Again, it's not a rule, but it's what we usually do. <laughs> Expression of the day. Yeah, it's time for the expression of the day today. The expression of the day. Don't beat around the bush. 
don't beat around the bush. Okay, if you beat around the bush, it means you're avoiding an important topic. You are, we have the verb to procrastinate, to put something off or procrastinate or hesitate to do what has to be done. Well, procrastinating or, or, or putting things off is more with like tasks. I have to do my homework and I don't, um, and, and, I, and I wait too, I wait very long because I don't want to do it. Then I'm putting it off or I'm procrastinating procrastinating. But beating around the bush is similar, but it's a bit, it's more like mentioning a topic. So if I go into the meeting and I say, well, I have some news. I was thinking maybe there's a bit of a, well, sort of, and, and then, and then my boss says, Kyle, don't beat around the bush. Bye al grano. Get to the point. Get to the point. Buy al grano. So the opposite of getting to the point, when you say ir al grano, the opposite of getting to the point is beating around the bush. So don't beat around the bush. Get to the point. Say what you have to say, okay? Be concise and get to the, get to the point, okay? Don't beat around the bush. And that's our expression of the day, to beat around the bush. Now, here we are in class 12. That's right, 12.2, and we're talking about a few phrasal verbs. Everyone loves phrasal verbs, don't you? Don't you love phrasal verbs? Verbos compuestos, a verb plus a preposition that creates a new and interesting meaning. I love phrasal verbs. Let's talk about the phrasal verb to write down. Well, let's talk about three. Very similar. To write down, apuntar. To copy down, copiar. And to note down. So note the, simil- note the similarity here in uh, how we're using the same preposition down, and it creates this idea of um, apuntar, copiar, anotar, write down, apuntar, copy down, copiar, note down, anotar. Very similar. Very similar meanings, okay? So just give me an answer. Answer my question. Did you write down his name? Give me an affirmative answer. Yes, I wrote down his name. Wrote. Today I write, yesterday I wrote. Did you write down his name? Yesterday, well, yes, yes, I wrote down his name. Did you copy down the information? Yes, I copied, with a D, copied, hard D sound. Yes, I copied down the information. Did you note down what he said? Yes, I noted, extra syllable, noted down what he said. Yes, I noted down what he said. Did you copy down the address? Yes, I copied down the address. Did you write down her information? Yes, I wrote down her information. Did you note down the key details? En voz alta. Yes, I noted down the key details. Notice how we're, re- we're repeating over and over and over. Practice, 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 because practice makes perfect. Answer my question, did you copy down the order? Yes, I copied down the order. Did you write down the outline? Did you write down the outline? Yes, I wrote down the outline. Did you note down the ingredients for a recipe? Did you, did you note down the ingredients? Yes, I noted down the ingredients. Did you write down the directions? Yes, I wrote down the directions. Answer all my questions. Four more. Did you note down his profile information? Yes, I noted down, noted, okay, noted down his profile information. Did you copy down what they requested? Yes, I copied down what they requested. Did you write down his details? Yes, I wrote down his details. Very good. And finally, did you note down the reference number? Yes, I noted down the reference number. Great job. Vocabulary of the day. Yes, it's time for the vocabulary of the day. Financiar. Financiar. To finance, to finance, to finance a project, for example. Adverso, adverso. Adverse, adverse, adverse. Very good. Cimientos. 
foundations. Foundations. Los años cincuenta. Los años cincuenta. The fifties. The fifties, we say. The fifties, the sixties, the seventies. Elvis was popular in the fifties. He was also popular in the sixties. He wasn't popular in the twenties, but he was popular in the fifties. Boda. Boda. Wedding. 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 Now, be careful. Going back there, one note in your in your student guide, and I agree agree with this. It's important to pay attention to the pronunciation of finance. We put the emphasis on the first syllable, finance. We don't say finance. We say finance. Data. Data. Finance. Finance. Very good. Okay, now we're going to take a look at reported speech. Reported speech. And this is explained quite well in your student guide. Basically, you have to remember that we're taking one step back in tense. And as mentioned in the guide also, we're going to focus today on the present and the past. So if we're speaking in the present simple, we go back to the simple past. If we're speaking in the simple past, we go back to past perfect. If we're speaking in present perfect, we go back once again to past perfect. I will give you some example sentences and you can respond with reported speech. For example, I heard the news. Kyle said that he had heard the news. So this is the way it would appear in the newspaper. This is why we call it reported speech. Okay? I live in Spain. Kyle said that he lived in Spain. I like pizza. Kyle said that he liked pizza. I don't like tomatoes. Kyle said that he didn't like tomatoes. I've seen all the Star Wars movies. Kyle said that he had seen all the Star Wars movies. That's right. En voz alta. Out loud with me. I worked yesterday. Kyle said that he had worked the day before. We won't say yesterday here. We'll say the day before. Because imagine we're writing this in the newspaper and we're talking about something that happened years and years ago, maybe. Kyle said that he had worked the day before. Okay? I take the metro often. Kyle said that he took the metro often. Okay? I fixed it. Kyle said that he had fixed it. I'm still looking for a good assistant. Kyle said that he was still looking for a good assistant. Okay, we're almost out of time. I'm going to ask you a little riddle today. A little riddle. Acertijo. A riddle. And I will give you the answer tomorrow. My riddle is as follows. Okay. What is so delicate? What is so delicate that when you say its name, it's broken? What is so delicate that when you say its name, it's broken? Mm, okay, I'm going to leave you with that thought. Send your answer in through the website. And if you don't send it in, well, I'm going to give you the answer tomorrow, okay? Again, if you have any questions, through the website, ask our team of teachers, and they'll get back, back to you right away. And I'm going to answer your questions on the radio as well. Thanks for listening, everybody. See you soon. My name is Kyle. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>